Hello and welcome back to the Voice of Veloce podcast. Today's guest is a very own member of our team. It is Ryan Tavita, who does quite a few roles, don't you, Ryan? Ryan, do you want to explain exactly what it is that you do for Veloce? Yeah, thanks for having me, Hayden. It's actually uh, it's my first time on a podcast, so... Uh, Ooh. <laughs> We're taking yeah. your podcast virginity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm the managing director of the... Uh, US. I'm based here in New York, um, but spent quite a lot of time when when we could still travel uh, in the UK with you guys. Um, we're currently in the midst of uh, closing a, a fundraise and expanding the company. So um, my role predominantly is uh, is working with Rupert and Jack, who is uh, who are two of the three co-founders, and and Jamie on. On various projects, from the fundraising to new business to um, to streaming to like flying to Florida to bring stuff a vendor in my old placey and <laughs> other other duties as assigned. So um, I mean, at the moment, I mean we're expanding quickly, but uh, there's, I guess when 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 that was, uh, we're only a, a team of like twelve or th- thirteen guys. So um, now that we're expanding, I think. Uh, um, I won't have to do as much of that stuff. And, you can delegate that we'll, eventually. Yeah, we'll we'll be hiring in this in the states pretty soon too, and and expanding into New York, um, along with other projects across the world. So, um, that's really exciting, and uh, yeah, uh, that's that's basically what my role more formally will be once we once we set up operations over You're- here. You're also a racing driver as well, racing uh, more recently in F2 last season, taking part in the uh, Austrian Grand Prix, wasn't it, for two, th- those two races over there. Um, so talk to us about that. So talk to us about maybe if there's any plans in the future or how that um, can change from real life driving into the esports avenue, which you're taking on now. Yeah, I mean, I, I started racing. Um, racing was always my dream. And I started racing late compared to everyone on my first race in my life was when i was 17 um i had never done karting uh like at a serious level yeah i mean if you look at pierre gasly lando charles everyone they started Mm -hmm. karting when they were five five to six years old um all the guys i raced against during my career um all all came from that background really um and yeah I, i i started in in 2011 basically just i got a an opportunity um got a connection to a racing team uh in canada and reached out to them and somehow convinced the, the team owner to give me a test um so that's where it all really started while i was still in high school and then i i really started racing full-time in 2013 um in i got an, a, a seat in in formula renault in in the northern european championship so actually my first race proper like european race at a competitive level was I was up against Esteban Ocon, Oliver Rowland. Uh, I mean, guys who have been karting and testing and, and like such guys who are in Formula One now. Um, so it was really a, a trial by, by fire. But I mean, I was able to, to progress and learn and um, had my first podium in, in 2014 and my second season. And then uh, did uh, one and a half seasons in, in FIA Formula Three. Uh, with Carlin and then uh, in 2017 got the opportunity to race with with Trident in in GP3 which is obviously supporting the F1 calendar Um, had a really good rookie year finished uh, eighth eighth in my rookie season um, in the championship with uh, three podiums um, and a few top fives and uh, then 2018 I did a I stayed with Trident had another a good another good season uh, and was yeah tested in F2 at the end of 2018 obviously looking uh, towards F2 in 2019 um, and at that time I mean uh, I was one of the few American drivers but I was certainly the American driver with the with the best best results um, and that uh, yeah I mean I, I tested in F2 I was fourth quickest in the in the first uh, test session my first time in the car in Abu Dhabi um, and tested with one day with Trident, one day with uh, with Arden, uh, which is now HWA. So I was very close to, to getting a seat full time, but um, 
obviously racing's a tricky sport um, in many perspectives. So um, that, unfortunately, in the states, there's really just not as much interest as it is as there as there is in Europe. So yeah. in terms of in terms of finding the funding to 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 go actually do F two and and compete with with those guys who who are there, um, it just was too hard. So um, I was looking at different opportunities, uh, whether I was racing in GTs or maybe coming back to the states. Um, but uh, kind of fortuitously, um, in March of 2019, I met uh, met Rupert and Jack, who are two of the co-founders from from Veloce in uh in switzerland when they were there for some meetings with uh with alfa romeo so um we just really hit it off i i got really interested in what what they were doing and um racing really gave me a sort of you're as much as you're a racing driver you're also an entrepreneur so from a business perspective um that was it i definitely had some some experience and i could see how i, I could apply that what i learned in in my racing career into into this new venture in veloce so um i started working with the guys over the summer and then uh they uh yeah they they formally asked me to join the company in september of last year so now obviously between then i had the one-off race in f2 in austria um and that was basically a super last minute opportunity that that came up because uh, trident was also struggling a bit with with uh with their drivers so um, they basically called me up and said, Ryan, on, I, I found out on the Tuesday before the race weekend. <laughs> and that was a possibility on a Monday. And I was here in New York. So <laughs> I literally flew, found out Tuesday at noon, was on a flight, on the flight to Milan, landed in Milan, went straight. To, I hadn't driven since Abu Dhabi. Uh, <laughs> so I went straight from the... Um, straight from the airport Giacomo the team manager picked me up we went straight to the kart track uh, I did kart, karted in the morning um, and early afternoon and then from there uh, we drove to Red Bull Ring got there 1am uh, Wednesday night set everything up on Thursday luckily I had a seat made already and everything so that was fine um, and I had to pick up a different helmet on my way there and like we got some graphics done, so it actually looked like I had a painted helmet, which was was cool how that worked out. Um, but yeah, then I mean, the F two weekend, it's like it, you get forty five minutes of practice, and then it's straight to qualifying. Um, and it it went it went really well, to be honest. I'm actually happy how it went. I was having a, a bit of an engine issue compared to uh, my teammate Giuliano, who obviously is a is a good friend of mine, and we were teammates for two years, and and had some had some good races together um but it, like it's so tight i think i was around 1.1 seconds off from the pole time and half a second would have put me just outside the top 10 because i was actually like quicker than giuliano in in a in a lot of corners and like it, everything that could go wrong went wrong in that quality like i went out i got stuck in like fourth gear i had to box they had to reset the pneumatics and then i went out i was running in the gap but it actually worked out because i got some good air time because of that and then uh and then in the in the race um yeah i had never done a pit stop before so uh the pit stop was cool but also it's, it's pretty intense um and and yeah i ended up keeping matsushita who went on to win the race i was like battling with him for a few laps because i was on an alternate strategy so anyways that was that was my my f2 race and uh and and now yeah here full time working on the esports. That's awesome. Long story. Long story. I know. <laughs> no, no, it's. it's, quite it's a, <laughs> I I can't actually believe like so. Obviously, we've never met in person, Ryan. I'm very new to Veloce, so for for me to hear all of that, like it's it's awesome actually to to get to know you a little bit more and from the racing background because I knew none of that. Um, so that's amazing. Yeah. So just thanks, man. What what is what is the reason why it took you till 17 to get into it because you're clearly extremely passionate about racing so what was that click yeah. that changed it at that age um i mean growing up i'm not from a motorsport family okay my dad's my dad's not a formula one driver my parents didn't even really like cars racing was always my my dream i i mean i was always obsessed with cars and mm -hmm. like i had rc cars would, would play a lot of racing video games actually that's like kind of how um, I mean, when I was when I was a kid, like we moved around quite a lot because of my dad's job, and um, right, 
so in terms of uh, getting into karting, I, there was I never lived anywhere like near a kart track, um, and education was always the priority. Um, so my parents were always saying, "Yeah, well, you can get a go kart if you get straight A's." And I, I got straight A's, but we were never in a place where uh, we could I, could I could go karting. So yeah, um, but I did play a lot of of racing video games, like the old F one games, which were sick. I used to do like full grand prix distances in the in the f1 game at like 12 years old <laughs> that's cool in, like. uh, in my mom got me like a, a racing suit to wear too so <laughs> do you I have do a that. picture of this I do, I do, uh maybe somewhere <laughs> uh, <laughs> see if you can take that off a, yeah it's probably on one of our really old digital cameras somewhere in the basement <laughs> but, um yeah so so i uh, and that was on a ps2 so that was like in fourth and fifth grade when when I used to when I lived in the UK um, and in London. Um, but I, actually, I think what really solidified like my dream of racing in Formula One and um, was when when we did live in the UK and uh, I started watching Top Gear um, and also which is probably still my favorite show. Um, <laughs> it's but so good. I it's so good. <laughs> um, but I went to the top gear live uh, and like the one of the things they had at like the, the in birmingham yeah um at the nec and like i got to drive on like a like a, in quotes f1 simulator um and i think I, f I was like second behind like a real racing driver Decent. some guy who was doing like the british touring car championship or something he was a lot quicker than me but i, I still remember that so uh that's i think what really solidified my dream of racing in 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 at like a professional high level and eventually in, in, in Formula One. So being um, second almost gave you like the confidence to, to back it and be like, I actually am good at this. Like, cause it's been a passion of yours clearly since you were young, but it takes like something to kind of spark to be like, am I good enough? And that clearly yeah. was, a, was a point in time at the Top Gear thing that said, oh, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, I am very gifted at this. So I'm going to kind of pursue it. Uh, yeah, I got my parents to take me karting for my like 11th and 13th birthdays. Okay. Um, and one time was in California in like a Rotax cart. Um, I have photos from that actually. But, um, <laughs> Send them over. We'll and, get them edited. And, and, <laughs> and they were, um, yeah, they were, uh, they were saying like, yeah, your your son's really quick. You should like do something about. It. And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure. They're just saying that. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, education was always a priority. So I I I I went to. Um, prep school in, in Connecticut and and um, obviously my my path was to be going to university and I I, I did start at university um, in tw at, after I graduated um, but it's actually really my education that gave me the opportunity to go racing because without being in, at the where I was at the time and and not knowing my friend who knew this team owner like I never would have gotten involved in in, in racing probably so um, yeah it is mad though that like so what you're saying is you didn't drive any sort of car before you went to that uh team yeah, owner. My, yeah yeah so I, I that, that team owner <laughs> you you could literally persuade anyone to do anything because that team owner is just like you're going up to him, yeah i've never driven before but give me a test and it just goes well, to show that that with f1 and racing that natural talent is such a big thing and like by the sounds of it the fact that you didn't do any driving till 17 yeah, so, you must have a lot of natural talent and all fairness to you thanks uh i mean i, I hope so i mean I, I don't think i'm at the at the level of like charles for example but i did overtake him around the outside <laughs> of uh turn seven like this the third section of lake home in formula renault in a formula renault race so okay. i'll always give him I'll always give him <laughs> give him flack for that <laughs> but um basically yeah i mean with the, with that test he i was always really passionate about formula one and racing so when i when he agreed to talk with me on the phone i w was able to just like talk racing to him and yeah. i think that uh yeah. kind of um gave him the idea like okay we'll we'll give this kid a kid a shot and uh so that was in a formula bmw in uh in texas at this track called grand sport speedway just outside of houston um and yeah, I have photos from that too. Um, but my my first race ever in my life actually was in uh, in Montreal in a Formula Ford at the support race, the Montreal Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. um, 
and there which is lunacy um <laughs> like i had n- never been on a track with other cars before <laughs> and i'd done i had i did 10 days of driving total um before <laughs> getting on track there at, at the formula one race uh and so we, the, we had no practice session it was straight to qualifying uh 30 minute qualifying session maybe it was even less 25 or something 44 cars on the track jesus um and like uh, yeah it was it was it was pretty crazy and um there were like two red flags i got maybe like three laps in and i qualified uh 21st out of 44 Mm -hmm. and then um obviously i improved i I improved into the race but and it was like continually improving in the race because obviously i wasn't very quick but um i managed to go from uh 21st to 10th in the in the race so um that was, yeah that was like my baptism by by fire really <laughs> um that was kind of a theme uh i guess throughout my whole career um but yeah it was crazy because it was right before the f1 qualifying so literally everyone was in the stands ready for the f1 qualifying yeah. and it i mean it was really surreal to be like sitting there in the same pit lane like having not been racing or been exposed to racing at all and just going straight to an f1 weekend and literally sitting in the pit lane and looking to my left and seeing like lewis hamilton's car in the mclaren garage and like uh that is so like, surreal yeah, actually a, like when it, you put it, it was, like that it was yeah i mean it was that was a, a really special experience um and something i'll i'll treasure from my whole life and it's actually like on on my helmet um I incorporated the first four corners of the track like into the design. That's cool. And obviously That's the cool. design evolves so and it has like a little uh start finish line on the the back and uh Salut Gilles, like it's written on the track. So mm-hmm. that that race in Montreal is a really really special special thing for me. That's really cool. Um moving from a special race to to another special race. Uh we've got the Le Mans 24 hours this weekend which you will be taking part the virtual yes. Le Mans 24 hours. Uh, in Exciting. your team, you've got Sasha Fenestras, uh, yeah. James Baldwin, James. and Tom Lartolo Storm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, how much practice have you done for that? I assume because you've got a pretty good rig uh, behind you. I <laughs> yeah. think that is just behind you in the background, um, and we, we'll see it in pictures in a bit. But uh, I assume you've done quite a bit of practice because you do enjoy your sim racing, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, it's been a little trickier because I've been having some connectivity issues with the with. The game uh, and the multiplayer servers so I haven't been able to practice as much as I would have liked and also like work's been pretty pretty crazy yeah. um, so I, I've finally got connected basically we had to do this practice race um, in order to qualify for it and I ha- had no opportunity like I could not connect any multiplayer servers <laughs> from my like proper sim rink here so I had to at 11 p.m. the race started at 5 a.m. sunday morning my time okay uh at 11 p.m. trying every solution like uh, like messaging with the with the um with the guys from from the develop the the gaming studio nothing would work i redid our whole network i mean I, basically last thursday the internet here completely tanked <laughs> and i couldn't stream i couldn't do anything <laughs> so i had to go to my apartment in brooklyn and bring like my i have a foldable play seat there and like a projector yeah so i bought i brought my pc um and like an old logitech g29 wheel that i have and set it up in my living room. I didn't have the screws to mount it to the play seat, so I had to use coasters. To, like, <laughs> and I did, I did my ten laps. I stayed up all night reinstalling the game, everything, because the, the internet is work there. Um, and and then yeah, finally, I, I did my ten laps at five in the morning and was up till like six thirty <laughs> or seven. So honestly, it had the preparation hasn't hasn't been optimal what, what? but uh, I've, been, I've been practicing yesterday and i'm going to practice some more today there's a test race coming up pretty soon um so we'll uh, the, these next these next few uh couple days before the race are going to be important for what, me to practice <laughs> when you practice for like a 24-hour race because the only thing i've got like to kind of compare it to is, is when you practice for a marathon people always say that you, you need to run at least up to half a marathon to maybe like 16 17 miles to prepare for it with a 24-hour driving race 
Do, does anyone ever actually prepare by driving 24 hour race in advance? Does that make sense? I, I mean, maybe some of the 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 sweats are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I think we've just been practicing our our race stints. Um, it's about it's a it's a 10 lap stint. Okay. So. Um, it's it's actually quite tricky because you have to save fuel. The game, the sim game, game simulator, whatever you want to call it, R Factor Two is it, the physics are really good, but it's actually really tricky to drive. But some of the guys, their pace is like unbelievable. I have no idea how. Like James, I have no idea how he does that. He's a uh, robot he, anyway, so don't worry. I know. About it. I, I <laughs> he know, just plugs like, himself in, downloads the update, and he's ready to go. I know, <laughs> but like um, Pierre and and Stoffel and Sasha, I think we're all kind of on on similar pace so um in the race it's it's it, it won't be about outright pace it'll just be about consistency not making any mistakes yeah um making sure we we do all the um pit stops and driver swaps correctly and and just grind it out because even if you're half a second slower lap if you you can easily lose 45 seconds yeah in the pits for repairs plus the the being slower for the for the damage you get so it'll really just be about staying consistent staying out of trouble um i'm going to be driving from 10 p.m my time to or sorry 10 p.m uh cet to okay. 11:45, and then midnight to one and then a stint at 6 a.m so well I'm, uh, I'm watching over the first 12 hours of the 24-hour race um for for like social stuff and things so yeah i'll, uh, I'll be well, rooting I'm for gonna, you guys I'm be streaming the streaming the whole oh, thing oh sick so. okay perfect uh we, we we're not allowed to stay in the server if you're not driving okay or not uh swapping but um the guys are going to be streaming their onboard from from discord yeah so i'll in the once I, once i finish up my stints i'll just open them up and uh perfect if anyone if anyone wants to tune in and, and see what's going on you can I'll definitely you can follow in. well I'll need the tips for uh, our Ar- Arlemon race the weekend after on iRacing, so uh, I'll definitely be learning the Are you doing a 24 hours. Uh, iRacing 24 hours? Yeah, we got the Domed squad, so uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys are going to go get the professional result. Uh, we're, we're just going to make a mock of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's racing with you, Hayden? Uh... That's the thing. We're not 100 sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Oh, <laughs> we don't know yet. Is it in the think... GT BMW? The are you doing a GTE or? Oh, no, we we want to go. We, we we thought we might as well go. We're going to go LMP1. Yeah, <laughs> well, let's do it. Uh, I think it's going to be me, Tom, Callum, who works for Veloce. We had him on the first episode of the podcast, uh, and then uh, maybe Ben. Okay. Um, and we'll see if there's anybody else who wants to take part, but. I'll happily do the whole 24 hours by myself. I'll be fine. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Remember when the Super, the Super, Super GT yeah. did um, his full uh, his full 24, or sorry, he did the 12 hour, Bathurst 12 hour. Yeah. Just him, like, that, that, that was crazy. That is That's mad. mad. Yeah. I'd love to do Bathurst. It's such a fun, but difficult track. Yeah. So yeah. I thought this would be a good transition point since we're talking about being, you know, in your rig for for such a long stint of time. It helps that you've got a really comfortable one. So I've sent you guys that document. So yeah. what I yeah. did was I tweeted out saying to you guys, send us in pictures of your rigs. And I meant play rigs. I know Hayden took it as like, send us a picture <laughs> of your body. <laughs> of course he was going to do that. Um, and I've got some up in the document there, guys. So what, what we'll do is we'll just literally go from one page one all the way down to page nine. And we're going to rate these right. rigs. Um, so when you've got the document open, let me know. And uh, so we'll start going. Right, I'm so. Ready. So first up, obviously we, we've got Ryan's. I wanted to have like a bit of a benchmark. So this is like the pinnacle. You've got good cable management. You've got the Veloce logo in there. I, I don't know uh, you've the got the R- RGB lights in the, the background. Manager, <laughs> it's tidy. It looks clean. You've got like all bells and whistles. So that's like, you know, the top side. And then if we scroll down to the next image, that's kind of like the bottom end. So this is like the, yeah. the top and the bottom. So there, it's not nothing to do with his rig. It's more the fact we can't see his rig. So I'd, he's... <laughs> He's playing on PlayStation. If you really zoom into the top right, the lighting is terrible. He hasn't tied his room. I mean, the only benefit is that he's he's flexing on the four Man- Manchester United pencil cases in the bottom right. But and that's it. So that's, oh, oh that, that's how that's how we're uh, we're gonna benchmark it. Okay, so top pristine, okay, and, yeah. and that's what we're going. So next one up, um, we've got the the triple monitor. What do you guys think Number of that one? Three. 
Which one was number three? Uh, number three. Clearly a controller player too. Um, Is that a triple very... monitor? I don't know. Have I got a like... past one? Uh, it's a, it's the new document, Hayden. There's a there's the latest one. Uh, so there's two on one page. Hang on. We'll hang put on, them up on, on the screen. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it now. Got it so now. This one. Okay, it could yeah, be a keyboard and mouse player, Ryan. You never know. <laughs> Honestly, I found out the other day I'm better on keyboard and mouse than I am on a controller. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> yeah. How do you play with the mouse? Well, to be fair, you don't use the mouse. You, you just, just use the you keyboard. Use the okay. keyboard, yeah, yeah. So okay. you use the mouse for steering or something. Yeah, you <laughs> <really wild. laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether that would be easy. Like, you could just move its slight adjustments left and right. That would actually be too yeah. bad. That would be decent. <laughs> I'd try that. Try that out on your next. Uh, yeah, you just have to do your uh, your mouse in like a circle, in small little circles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. It's good, good triple monitor setup. But uh, yeah, you always win with a triple monitor. Looks Maybe like he, it looks like a good PC. He, it looks like he has a strong PC. Yeah. Logitech keyboard, nice RGB on on the. Uh, looks like he has good components, but the 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 mess on the bottom. Left. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That that looks like the snack bin. The yeah. Snack bin and the rubbish bin. He's been doing a twenty four hour race recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what you need. Okay, next up we've got a. Uh, this one's like a solid setup. The picture's terrible, and he clearly forgets yeah. the map because he can take his take his head to the left, and he's got like a full <laughs> map of every race. So that's that's yeah. positive, I suppose. He's never gonna forget yeah. the tracks. Um, Cable management and uh, and uh, the seat looks like it needs a needs an upgrade. <laughs> it needs work. But it almost looks like he has a like a direct drive steering wheel, like. I don't know what that is. I don't know, I don't know what that is. It's like it's that's like a dashboard, I think. So I think it's like a working, a working Honda Civic dashboard. <laughs> He's like He's modern just his own. Outside, taking his whole car apart, just put it into his living room. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so that it looks it looks pretty. It looks like a self-made rig, which is which is pretty. Uh, that impressive. extra we'll, points we'll get, for that yeah extra extra points for that for sure okay next up we've got two professional driver rigs um yeah, one of them is our very, very own hypers um uh, which is the bottom one these are really clean i think that's hypers yeah. one, but at the bottom yeah hypers at the bottom He's fair play to him he keeps it clean keeps it tidy Although yeah, his but... feet are very far apart at the bottom. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about you, Ryan. My feet are quite close together usually. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good that's, point. Uh, that's like he's just got his legs out here when he's trying to press some pedals like that. It's a little, little, little strange. But yeah, that, that, that first one, actually, I've been looking at those uh, sim lab rigs because they're. Uh, they're pretty sick and they're, they're a lot more compact than the one yeah. I have right now. Very um, minimalistic. It's very minimalistic, so that's that's a super super clean looking one. Okay. Um, so th these these ones are definitely definitely up there. Sweet. Hypers could use a little better cable management though. Yeah. And put his pedal put his pedals together. <laughs> what the hell is? That? <laughs> <laughs> but can you? Can, I'm assuming you can adjust those, can you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can put yeah, them as close together or far far as part as you want on the on the base. Hypers, comment below what that's all about, bro. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah. up, we've got the uh, the. The poor cable management uh, gives me a little bit of anxiety seeing, you can actually see like the red, blue, and yellow cables if you zoom in in the top right on that extension. So that's a health and safety man. nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's got the kit. The, the concept is there. He's got the wheel. He's yep. got the Fanatec wheel mm -hmm. looking good. At the F1 eSports version. It looks very so. sort of self-made, that one as well. It does it, look it like does. it's... Uh... Like it does. It looks like he has his pedals massively far apart as well. <laughs> what is it with the these just how, big like are they, the how big are their feet? He, he might just be the quickest man in the world and can take every corner flat out. Yeah, he, doesn't need a he brake. might just not have a brake pedal <laughs> left. He just true. took it off. I don't need that. <laughs> it's going oh, around on the accelerator. Sorry. Next up. Um, oh, oh, this right. was my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> This it reminded me of Harry page. Potter a little bit, it's like the away. kind of angle <laughs> coming under the stairs, extended. Like, he I might like as it. well. Like that bed looks so uncomfortable that he might as well just extend his chair backwards and fall asleep on that. What <laughs> my I I think he sold his bed frame for extra PC parts because his PC Probably. setup is a beast. He's double monitored up. He's got everything you need. So I give him credit for the fact that he's gone hard on that setup. He's more that, that, priority on the game. That desk though, that desk though is looking. Uh. Cluttered. The amount of blankets that he's got as well. I'm pretty sure that's not for warmth. That's just to 
to cushion the floor beneath him. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're probably right. Like, when you guys send these pictures, you think they would tidy their rooms up, but oh, hey. We can zoom in as I well. Know, right? <laughs> you can, like, literally, like, we can nose into their rooms. We can zoom in. <laughs> oh, careful now, Aiden. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> He's got, like, a little got parrot one. hanging around his... Uh, uh, I like his the little... Michael Schumacher What's happened to the seat? Uh, Ferraris. Well, we give him points for the, the posters. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The seat's a little bit worn out, so I think we need the to The seat's a little bit worn out. That's yeah. a good <laughs> sign, though. That shows that he's committed to the cause. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's quite cool. Um, okay, we've got, we got three left. Um, okay. This one I kind of liked. Um, the only problem I saw with this one, from my perspective, is if he's got, like, his office desk behind him. If mm -hmm. you're sitting with your office desk there and you've got a placing rig right in front of you, it's going to distract you. You're going to want to go and jump in for a couple of laps, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll give him points, though, for the, for the monitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a that's a Curved. that's a good looking monitor and and he's got some light blue RGB going in the back and a Danny mini Rick helmet and yeah. a mini Danny Rick helmet that's so cool. cable management could be better but um, making use of the space though he's making use of the space and he would he looks like he has a Thrustmaster steering wheel so um, good good kit he 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 could he could be quick in that Rick we'll, yeah we'll give him yeah. the worst thing I've experienced is when you've got your wheel. Uh, on the same desk setup that you work from. That's what I used to do when I did YouTube back in the day. So you'd have to undo the wheel, like move it, take it off the desk, put it back on. It used yeah, to be a pain, or you'd have to work around it like that with your arm <laughs> yeah. over the top of your wheel trying to work on your keyboard. Fair, so I can imagine that, that being annoying. That's, uh, S speaking of that sort of setup, if we go to the next one, that's exactly what this guy. There, <laughs> there we go, there we go, there it is. <laughs> I, I love that there's a um I I had to do this a same a similar sort of thing uh that there's a wooden box or whatever it is behind the wheels to stop them moving. To stop okay. so when I first had my yeah. setup, I had nothing, so I literally had to try and put as much stuff in front of my pedals to stop them moving. And then uh, later <laughs> today, I just fixed my desk up so that I could put the pedals against the wall. And he's got um, the carpet underneath to help with that, I imagine as well. Underneath, yeah, yeah, yep. smart. Yeah, yeah. He's been sweating it out because the chair's worn, so that's what you like to see. Yeah, exactly. He, he, a... he could probably be quite quick with this rig. Mm. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. And then finally, we've got a four oh. monitor setup. Oh. I don't know if you need four monitors now, but wild. go for I, it if you've I, got the space. I have, a, I have a top monitor too, so it's uh, it's good when you have, like, you can have the, the stream stuff up there. Yeah. And then, yeah, um, you can read the chat. This guy, this guy streams. He's got a stream deck, uh, he's got a microphone. Um, a webcam too so uh i think yeah. i think that's one of the best Fantastic. setups to be fair this as well the, yeah cable management could be better photo angle I was could be better just well. about to say that's what's letting it down because we don't get the full kind of action on it if we uh, compare yeah. it to yours at the top ryan S some uh some some rgb lights would do him well i think yeah <laughs> always um always <laughs> uh <laughs> um, he's got the proper F1 uh, Fanatec wheel, like the wheel hub, and looks like the CSL Elite base plus the V3 pedal. So he's he's kitted out. Very good. Yeah, he's uh, this man's kitted out. He's beasting it. He didn't go to the effort of giving us an F1 2020 screenshot or an F1 2019 screenshot in the background and just left it on his wallpaper. I know. Some of the kids made the effort, guy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be my only critique. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Well, there we go. That's uh, that's all of the ones that I'd sent in just before the podcast started. There's now like 20 or 30. So if you guys want to go check them out, check the thread. Um, yeah. That, that was uh, up, rate my rig. <laughs> you rate your rig. <laughs> <laughs> rate my rig. What a, what a title. I like it. What should we, what should we rate, like what should we rate next it. time, guys? Let us know in the comment section down below what you'd like us to uh, <laughs> to look at or rate. Uh, obviously, keep it PG now. Come on. Let's everyone right, send us you, pictures Ryan. of your parent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe edit that one. <laughs> rate the mums. Ryan's recently got a new oh, puppy, right. so maybe... Uh, maybe Show yeah, us your pets. Do you want to meet? Do you want to? Do you guys want to meet him? Uh, yes, hundred yes. percent. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's he's crying right now, so I need to go get him. He's but like, I want to be on the podcast. Get me on there, Ryan. He's probably crying okay. after seeing some of those rigs. I, to be climb, I don't blame out of my rig. <laughs> so this is Harley. I think his name was Harley. He said Harley. Yeah, Harley Davidson. <laughs> Maybe, no, no, he needs to get another one and then call that one Davidson. Yes, that so would work Harley really well. And then Davidson, that would be pretty great. Look, imagine that having the setup in the background. Yeah, he's got a very clean setup, right? And that's why I use that as the, the setup, the, the pinnacle setup yeah, at the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section there which one is. was your favorite. And here's Harley right here. Here's Harley. He's actually way smaller than I thought as well. Okay, Look at him. <laughs> Hello, Harley. I was saying to, uh, I was saying to um, Mickey. Um, oh, you put your headphones. Let me get my headphones back on. <laughs> I was, I was, I was saying to Mickey. So, is, so you need to get another one. And call it Davidson. <laughs> He's so cute. He is. So how old is he? Ad adorable. He is like thirteen weeks old. Nice. Um, <laughs> just, just older. He's than so Carlton. happy to see you. <laughs> Yeah, he's been. He has. He wasn't so happy in his uh, in his pen. Uh, you weren't happy in your pen, were you, Harley? But yeah, he is a Boston Terrier. Um, I grew up with a Boston Terrier and a Boxer, and obviously, with when I mean um, when I was racing, I wasn't able to like have a dog, and yeah. um, my family goes between New York and and Switzerland, so um, they're uh, yeah more. Um, now that I'm here in New York, and uh, obviously with the situation, not traveling anymore yeah. as much as I, I used to, because I used to be traveling a lot um, back to London, California as well. Um, so I thought now was a great opportunity to finally get a awesome. dog. So uh, <laughs> he is honestly, he's such a well-behaved little puppy, and he's very, very high. He's so he's got a very cute. tasty chin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, uh, yeah. But yeah, he's he's honestly he gets a little rambunctious, especially when he's tired. He gets very very rowdy. Yeah. But um, then he just passes out and he <laughs> sleeps a lot. And so it's a bit of a a bit of a cycle. But he's he's has like the cutest personality and like, <laughs> he looks so chill, man. <laughs> he's so cool. Hey, no. <laughs> So yeah, he's uh, we're gonna be moving. He's gonna be a city dog eventually once uh, once I'm back in Brooklyn more. But um, and we have set up our our operations out here in New York. But uh, for now, he's he's enjoying uh, life out here, and yeah, he's a very happy little dog. Awesome, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> so I am conscious of time, Ryan, because I know you've got a lecture to get to. Um... Yeah, I do. And the other thing is, yeah, I mean, I go part time to university now, so that was uh, um, education is still important. And I, of always, course, uh, if I if I stopped racing, I, I always knew I would, would go back to school. So I, I go part time now to um, Columbia University in the city, but um, it's all on zoom classes now which is great <laughs> which we uh we, we've asked you guys to tweet us in zoom classes but ryan said no to letting us come and crash his because we want to do some pranks so uh, <laughs> let us know in the comment section if you've got any zoom classes that you're willing for us to kind of jump in and have a bit of a mess about in for trial and some youtube content potentially um but yeah what is it you're studying ryan economics uh yeah, yeah. um i just finished up my first semester um and I, so I did one semester in 2012 after like one full-time semester after I graduated um, in the fall. And then obviously I started racing full-time. I did one semester in 2014 in Switzerland at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. Um, Cause I, in, it was all in French. Like I, I speak French, but uh, doing engineer at the time I was studying engineering and doing engineering all in French was like, <laughs> Major. And being gone like 80% of the time for racing was like way too difficult so I had to stop Fair. Um, but now I've decided obviously since I'm working um, on the, the management team and in, in with our with our esports business uh, I figured it would be more helpful for me to study uh, economics with a specialization in business management and it's also not as much math so it's, it's good <laughs> Awesome. No, it makes sense, like yeah. you say. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's how the world works, essentially, these days, economics. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's actually really interesting. It's, it's, and it's not, I found it, I took two classes to start, and that was, like, too difficult. Okay. Um, but so now I'm taking one, and it's going to take me a while to finish this, <laughs> like, like, six years, probably. Wow, really? <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I'd have to balance it with work, and yeah, um, otherwise it, it 
I would have dimin- diminishing returns on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so now I'm just going to be taking one, maybe two classes uh, a semester and just kind of keep it, keep it going steadily. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here today. Uh, thank, thank you, you for guys. Us. Thank you for showing it, us Harley as well. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's ready to sleep now. Wait, 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 uh. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. He, he becomes really floppy when he's tired too. It's so he's like a complete rag doll. <laughs> <He's so cute. laughs> All right, guys. Thank you All very right, much, Ryan. Right. Get your uh, get your Warzone downloaded. I think there's a massive update for season four. FYI. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, we gotta we gotta do a, a Veloce weekly war zone, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think, think we should we should put that in, um, get that in the schedule, and just lock it in every single week. Definitely. Yeah. Sounds good, guys. All thank right. everyone who has been watching. Afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for uh, everyone who's been watching at home. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more of the Voice of Veloce podcast. If you're listening over on iTunes, leave a five star review, or if you're listening on Spotify. Uh, drop us a follow as well so you never have to miss an episode thank you for joining us Ryan thank you for joining me again Mickey and uh, we'll see you all next time